Hey, good evening everybody. My name is Todd Wharton and I'm the host of FaceTime with Todd Wharton. I'm glad everybody is here tonight. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm honored to be here. I'm pretty excited about this right now. Um, we're going to get this thing going in a minute. Uh, first and foremost, um, FaceTime with Todd Wharton is a uh, Pretty much an online segment of GTC Live. Uh, GTC Live was a talk show uh, that I developed a couple of years ago. And unfortunately, due to the pandemic, uh, we had to obviously postpone. But here we are a year later, and I decided, let me start off a new segment called FaceTime with Todd Wharton. And we'll be interviewing people from around the world, distinguished guests, uh, and people making a positive impact on our society. Uh, at around 7.05, Darnell King from BET's Hustle in Brooklyn will be here with us and we're going to learn all about him uh, from when he was a kid all the way up to, to now and what he has been doing. Um, so pretty much let's start off with a few things. Uh, this video will be uh, re-shown on uh, Todd Wharton official on IG and you can also check it out on GTC Live's um, IG page as well at GTC Live Talk Show. A um, couple of topics that we can definitely talk to about tonight. Uh, I'm glad everybody's doing well. I see my man Joe Black is uh, on here right now. Joe, how you doing, man? Uh, right now, a lot of people got to be coming in a little bit. Uh, we're talking about uh, some of the current events right now. Uh, what Facebook uh, with Todd Warden is going on right now. Not Facebook, but FaceTime. Um, I'm a little weird right now because I spilled coffee all over myself. And speaking of coffee, I definitely got to give some love to New York City Bagel and Coffee House. You may not be able to see it. A great, great, great place to eat and get coffee and fresh bagels and fresh food. Uh, really excited about it. Um, I go there all the time to get my breakfast, so I got to give a shout out to them as well. And um, got to give love to you people. I love you. Uh, let's talk about some current events right now. I'm glad it's snowing outside. I'm a big snow fan. Uh, I can't wait till more snow comes down. I know a lot of people hate snow, but I love snow. I'm a little kid when it comes to snow. Playing in the snow, falling in the snow, always loving the snow. And uh, we need a little bit of uh, positive uh, life in our in our world right now. And um, excited about that as well. Um, getting into, obviously, a subject that we have all been seeing online, the pandemic. Um, you know, we're all going through it right now. Just give you a little background on me. Um, I'm actually one of the 18 million that did get unemployed. Uh, I was working in the restaurant industry for a long time, but keeping my head up, uh, doing positive things, building my network, uh, taking advantage of downtime, you know, watching Netflix movies, uh, collecting my unemployment as well as working on GTC as well, and just keeping a positive look on life. And that's what we need to do right now. Uh, keeping healthy, keeping strong, eating right, eating healthy, um, and trying to get through this because there is a hashtag, you know, we're all apart, but we're in this together. And that's the main focus of life, what we need to do right now and realize the people that are around us, how, how important they are and how healthy they are. Um, and uh, let's get to the Super Bowl. Uh, Super Bowl, man. I was excited to watch it over the weekend. I was kind of torn because I was rooting for Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady at the same time. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm happy for Tom Brady, man. I mean, the guy has been doing it for 20-something years to win his 10th. Well, his seventh Super Bowl being in it for 10 times a year, is, I'm, I'm pretty happy for him. And uh, I hope he has another two, three years, four years to go. And uh, I'm pretty excited about next season. Hopefully, I'll be able to get to go to some of these games instead of watching it. Uh, right here from my phone or even my TV or a computer. So in a couple of seconds, we're going to get to the interview with Darnell King. I see my man Felipe Rose is online. Hey, what's going on, Felipe? How you doing? Great to see you. Loving the white hair <laughs> that you're dying it, but uh, good to see you as well. And I'm really excited about the show. Just to let you guys know, right before we get to Darnell, I announced this two days ago and already February is booked. I'm booked for three weeks. My old Instagram account got hacked, so this is my new Instagram account, so hopefully we'll rebuild the following. And uh, I want to bring Darnell in. 
as well. Darnell, when you're ready to go, request me so I can bring you in and uh, we can get this interview going. Now, if you guys want to book uh, celebrities or if somebody's been doing some influential stuff from around the world, uh, you can always go to bookings at gtclivetalkshow.com and you can do your bookings as well. And let me see if I can bring in Darnell. Uh, no. Can't see Darnell yet. Darnell, all you got to do is request and we'll get you in, bro. Oh, uh, there you are. I got you. Go live. Hold on, I'm just waiting for Darnell to come through. How strong do you feel? No. Got it. There we go. All right, go live. There he is. Should be coming in right now. Hey, you all. What's up, D? Yeah, what's good, my G? I'm good, <laughs> brother. How are you? I'm great. I'm chilling. I'm, I'm in Brick House right now working on some things, but I'm I'm glad to be here with you. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful day. Yeah, well, I appreciate you being here, man. I've been telling some of the people, uh, my, my account got hacked not too long ago. So I had to reestablish my IG account. It's it's a shame too, because there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of great followers. Yeah. And when so many people out there try to pretend that you're you, yeah. and I'm not a celebrity, I'm just somebody who grinds every day. And I guess somebody was just mimicking me and now I have to do my brand new account. But D, I'm blessed because uh, I was just announcing as of today, mm -hmm. I'm booked throughout February. Wow, All good. three weeks are done. We got celebrities from all around the world. That's dope. Um, e list celebrities, A's, and people that are influential, man. And it's about getting back to the real stories about each person around the world so they can get to know you better, which is great. Right. From right. your followers to mine. And we'll be reposting this, resharing it. And I am working on something right now that hopefully by next week or week after, the show's going to get a lot bigger. Uh, so no, I'm actually cool. honored to have you, bro. No, nah, I'm, you know, when you call guest. me, bro, when you call me, you know, I, I answered, I love your energy. I think you're, you're a dope dude. And what you got going on, a lot of people ain't doing. So uh, if I can, you know, help and support you in any way, you know, I'm there for you. It's, it's no question. Thanks, man. And same way to you. I mean, I, we rocked a couple of years ago in Times Square. Um, that was pretty cool. I've never... Yeah. I never thought in a million years I'd do that, but a lot of stuff right now is going on with Dell's Up Global. That was crazy, though. When you put that together, you had uh, DJ Red Alert up there, and mm -hmm. um, it was already in the heart of Times Square right by the stairs, the red stairs. So um, I, don't, I don't know anybody that has done that and actually got away with it legally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, let's put it to you this way. That show has gotten a lot bigger. Um, my boy Calvin Stevens, my publicist, he does booking for Macy's. I got to give love to Calvin. We're working on something right now that Elsa Global is going to become an annual event. Right, right. But it's going to be a lot bigger than what you think. And believe me, you're going to be there in the red carpet with us. I promise you that. I'm okay. just giving you a little taste. Okay, so you're throwing um, me an alley-oop already. <laughs> I'm throwing you an alley-oop already. But let's talk about you, man, because there's a lot of stuff about you that people may not know. Uh, first of all, before we get to Hustle in Brooklyn, because I do my research, because that's what you have to do as a talk show host. Uh -huh. Back in 1993, wow. you were in a movie called There Are No Children Here, right? You were nine years old. Yeah. And you had the honor of being in this movie with Oprah Winfrey and Maya Angelou, man. Tell me about that. Um, a lot of people don't know that. And uh, that's kind of like a secret of mine because uh, I was really young. I was introduced to the industry uh, probably like around five or six. But it was just like my mother, she was a model. So, um, you know, she had connections and I just happened to try out for a part and I landed an extra. So, I mean, working with Maya Angelou and uh, Oprah was 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 crazy. I, I only met them like once on set. So mm -hmm. um, it was it was surreal. I mean, at the time, I really didn't know too much. It's like <laughs> yeah. I'm nine years old. <laughs> You're just sitting there looking at the cameras like, are we eating soon? Like, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What so am that I was doing like my here? first start of like getting wet in the industry and um just getting my name on some credits. Yeah, and it was a, I actually got to see some little highlights because I actually didn't see the whole movie. I just wanted to see some. And I'm like, right. you played a little kid named Leroy. 
Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I haven't heard the word Leroy in a long time. Like Le yeah. the last time I heard Leroy was the last dragon. That's the last yeah. time I heard that. I don't name. talk about that too much. I just kinda like I kinda kept I kept that low, but people found it. They found me and you know it is Well what you it should. Is. I mean, you know, everywhere everybody starts somewhere. Uh -huh. But obviously uh -huh. you lived a great childhood. Um wasn't more in the Hollywood scene, but at least you got to enjoy your you know, because some kids, once they get into Hollywood at that age, their life turns for either the better, but then a lot of times mentally for the worse. Right, 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 um, right. But I mean, after that, you were a self-made man. You became a rapper, hip-hop artist, music producer, mm -hmm. and you got to work uh, in Rock Nation, yeah, which is great. Uh, yeah. Rock Nation, if people don't know, I believe is Jay-Z and uh, Sean Picasso. Uh, Sean Picasso I met once, and you got to work with Rick Ross, Little Kim, Timbaland, and French Montana. Tell us about that, man. Man, I mean, honestly, I started interning at Dev Jam, I would say, uh, 2000, and I would say, two. I met a guy named JP, and he was, like, doing promo mm -hmm. on Street Team and stuff like that for him. And, um, you know, I seen them coming to the, you know, the school with all this kind of product to give away, because, you know, when the record labels back then had vinyl and stuff like that, CDs. So I was like, right. yo, you know, I was doing music, but I didn't know how to get into the industry. And then he was mm -hmm. like, um, I asked him, like, can I come with you one day? He was like, nah, you can't come come to the office with me. And I was like, that's crazy. So anyway, like a month passed, I asked him again. He's like, yeah, come up. I literally, the first day I get up there, I meet Jay-Z. Like, he's walking wow. through the hall. I'm like, nah, I'm, I, I went up to him. I introduced myself. I actually literally signed a piece of paper and said, yo, this is going to be worth money one day. And um, wow. he was laughing. But fast forward, um, you know, I actually really did did get to work with Jay-Z's label, which was Manolo Rose. I produced a record called I Get right. Money. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, Jay-Z actually had to clear that record because that that's a that's a big record. I, money, money, yeah. money, money. Come on. Like, yeah, that's so he cleared that. Mm -hmm. And when he found out that I had did it, he was like, oh, yeah, that's that's definitely like and I really had to be fair because. Rock Nation is a big label, so I wasn't even greedy. It's like, yo, we'll give you twelve point five percent of the record, which is which is you know, it's it's not really you know what you get, but I took it, you know. Right. And um. You have to. Yeah, of course. Like, why wouldn't I? You know. So, um, I worked with Rick Ross. I worked with Fabulous. I worked with Tory Lanez. I did Tory Lanez well, live show. You worked with Yeah. Right. Fabulous, one of my favorite, top, definitely top five hip hop artists. Yeah. I love Fabulous. Yeah, I work with Fab, I work with Lil' Kim, I did her sound engineering, but the real the real reason how I really got my name is I was working with Mace and Bad Boy. Um, oh, yeah. And you know, Mace is Justin Timberlake's favorite hip-hop artist of yeah. all time. And Eminem, too. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, when yeah. I got with Mace, um, I literally was, like, engineering in my house. So Brickhouse Studio started in my mother's house in a room. Right. And uh, me and my guy, Pre, um, uh, another guy, D. Blaze, Malik, Kevin Antonio, V.I., all these guys that I, I, I work with. Um, right. They they actually was the backbone of what I was doing at that time. Um, so, you know, I was getting hot in the hood. Everybody was coming to my crib recording. Mm -hmm. And it was like, right. I really couldn't really do it no more. I couldn't have people in my house. It was getting too crazy. So oh, wow. I went out to the city at the studio called um, Electric Field. Mm -hmm. And um, I was interning there, and, you know, I was really, like, my father always told me, like, consistency is the key to success. It don't matter what you want to be in life. If you're consistent in what you're doing, you're going to, yeah. something's going to happen for you eventually. It's going to happen. Oh, yeah. So um, I was really good at engineering. That was something that I went to school for. So um, when I met Mace, Mace was like, yo, um, they, matter of fact, I didn't even get to meet him. French Montana was in there with Jada Kiss. And he didn't like the engineer. I guess the engineer was too slow or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll tell you another really quick story about Timbaland with this. Yeah, bring it. This is all about you. Come on. So so um, I was really working fast at that time. I thought was fast, but I wasn't. I was really slow. But I was faster mm -hmm. than these other guys. So right. Mace kicks them out the studio. He's like, yo, we got one more kid in the back. You know what I mean? And he's just, he's just uh, good with organizing files. So he was like, yo, go get him. Go get, go get him. So... I come in the room, I don't say anything to French Montana, Jada Kiss, or Mace. I just sit down and I get to work. We did two records that night. We did In a New York Minute, and we did right. something else for Jada Kiss. I forgot what it was. But, yeah, um, New York Minute, I remember that. Yeah, we did that one. And um, 
that same day before the session was over, Mace was like, yo, what are you doing? I'm like, yo, you know, I'm in, I'm engineering out my crib. I come here, they ain't, ain't really treating me right. He was like, yo, come to Atlanta with me. So literally like the next day I fly out, I go to Atlanta. And this is when he had retired from music. So mm -hmm. things are starting to move fast for me. And um, I was still like, I didn't really know the industry like that. I was just like fresh. You know what I mean? So right. I never really spoke about money. Like it was like, I didn't know what engineers really get paid. Like, you know what I mean? So I was working for him for free for four years. Right. But that's good though. When you, when you're teachable and you're raw, yeah, you develop that mindset of how the industry works instead of just jumping in for the money. Right. Right. That's right. probably why where you are today. And that's why a lot of artists fail because they all want the money, uh -huh. but they don't want to learn about the industry and they, people don't understand. And they, they need to hear this Brody. because there's a saying goes that your whole career is 10 percent talent facts 90 percent business facts 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 so keep going man because that was important yeah well, quick shout out to everybody that's that's in the room right now checking in with Todd. Definitely. We appreciate y'all i'm just giving a brief summary of my my journey in music um shout out to everybody i'm, I'm gonna get back to y'all um so Definitely. yeah so i was working for him for four years for free and i was literally traveling all around like paying for my own flights paying for my own tells the only thing he would pay for is food and mm -hmm. then um, I had a conversation with one of my guys, VR. He was like, yo, you need to tell him, like, you could do this with or without him. And I'm like, how am I going to tell Mace I could do this with or without you? Like, but I got, I got mad one day because they went to the club and they yeah. had me in the crib mixing records. And I'm like, yo, why I can't go to the club? Why I got to stay in the crib all day in the studio and mix records? Like, and I'm not getting paid. So me and him mm -hmm. had a conversation. And I said, yo, I can even do this with or without you, bro. And, and I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. That nigga sent me home, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to say. He was like, all right, cool. Um, it was good working with you. I went back to New York. So in my mind, I'm like, damn, I made a, I made a stupid-ass decision saying this, right? Fast That's forward, how you learn. Fast forward three months later, my phone rings. Beep. It's him. He like, yo. I mean, I know things got rough. I really appreciate how you was working with me for all those years. And I really think, like, you didn't really dis be disrespectful how you talked to me, but you manned up and you said, yo, this is, this is I can't do this no more. Right. So he was like, yo, I'm going to give you 10% of whatever I make. So I was like, what? Yeah. Like, my mouth dropped. I'm like, what? Bro, I was like, okay. So I really started taking on a different approach to music. I stopped, like, stopped engineering because yeah. I was rapping and all that, but I started managing his day-to-day -day stuff. So mm -hmm. I really started getting like the insights of like how everything works. I was booking shows for him. I was traveling with him. I was like his DJ, mm -hmm. his assistant. I was like everything in one. And um, wow. we just grew a relationship with like really, like right now, that's like my brother. Like Mace is like, he's my, he's my mentor, but at the same time, he's my brother and we're like, we're business partners at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I told him like, yo, I, I love everything that you got going on, but I want to follow my own path. And I don't want to walk in your shadow all day because like, right. you, you have your legacy. I got something I started called Brickhouse Studios. So he was like, yo, I live tired. Literally, I, I, lied. I kid you not, bro. I was on point with this guy. And one day, everything switched to, and got better when we was on tour, the Bad Boy tour. And I know him, so I know once, once he says something, he means it. Like, he doesn't want to say it again. So if he be like, yo, I need some yeah. coffee. Or I need something like from the cleaners. I know that he wants that right now. Like he's not saying get it later. He's he wants it right now. Yeah, he's a doer. He's yeah. not procrastinating. Like uh -huh. yo, like yo, I need these flyers printed. It's not like tomorrow. Like yo, get it done right now. Figure it out. Right. So I was put in a position where I had to learn how to. Um, basically, I had to learn how to be a road manager. In a blink of an eye, because he fired everybody. He said, "Yo, right. be downstairs at eight o'clock." a.m. and if you're not on the bus by 745 like 745 actually we're leaving at 8 we're leaving right there. I was down there at 7 o'clock waiting for the bus to pull up 740 730 hits he's on the bus bro he wanted us to be downstairs at 745 so I'm on I'm on the bus at like whatever like 720 725 he comes on the bus he's at 7 at 735 he's like let's go he leaves right. everybody, <laughs> right? That so, should be a perfect example of what people should strive 
and understand what he's right. about right now. Right. Yeah. Like, so he leaves everybody, he pulls off. So everybody's running after the bus now. And he's like, yo, yeah. he, and there's some big security guy. Like, he's huge. He's like two, 300 pounds of security guy. He's like, yo, D, tell him he can't get on the bus. Tell everybody they can't get on the bus. So yep. my heart's racing like this because I'm dealing with a 300-pound man that got his stuff in the back of the bus, and he want to get it. You should so, just throw him a Twinkie and then get on the bus and be like, go, <laughs> take off. Nah, I ain't going to lie to you. I tried my <laughs> best. To not get like to not to let him get on the bus, but I'm a buck forty. <laughs> He's three hundred pounds. <laughs> he literally picked me up like this and moved me like, yo, get out of here. Boom, right? <laughs> so yo, got there. like three hundred and something pounds. You're like, listen, I'm one forty. I'm gonna hurt a thirty your body. Yeah. And then you can just have the rest. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I mean, I tried. I was like, yo, bro, you can't get on the bus right now. We move. And he was like, nah, I'm, where's my check at? I ain't get paid yet. I'm like, yo, we'll deal with that. I'll take you. I'll deal with whatever we, whatever we had. So literally, exactly. all the money in my, I had in my pocket, I was like, yo, what, 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 should, like, what, what does it cost? Like, what are we supposed to, I was supposed to get to pay two racks. I'm like, damn, I only got like 1300 in my pocket. Like, so just like, to, just to have the situation handled, I was like, yo, bro, here's, here's the 12, whatever. I don't know what happened with you and him, but obviously you want to be professional. I know you got a name in this industry. So I used my brain at that time. I'm like, yo, I'm going to give right. you this. I'm going to take care of you and whatever we got. Because he was in the back. He was all the way in the back, sleep. That's right. Like, act like he was asleep. He wasn't really asleep, though. So I took care of him. And when I did that, he was like, yo, how you, how you just got him to, like, leave like that? I was like, I took care of it. He was like, I need you to take care of my business. Yeah, that's business right there. So that was a respect factor. <laughs> yeah. So after that, when we got to the next city, um, I was like talking to Puff directly. Puff, like in order to get to Mace, you had you had to talk to me. So nobody can always. even talk to him. Yeah, always. So I'm dealing with Puff Daddy directly, and me, that's why me and Puff have a great relationship because I, I was never scared of Puff. I was never shy to tell him how it was because Puff didn't pay me. Mace paid me. So right. he was a boss. So it's like I, I know you're Puff Daddy, but still, like this is our shit over here he's the boss so i mean my relationship just became like solid from there and then i went over to do hustle in brooklyn and um after i did that tour i got a, a amazing check from bad boy and it really put me on my feet it really helped me be the person i am today and you put it into your studio right yeah so i built the studio and then hustle in brooklyn nice, happened. Man. yeah i yeah. like a brick house studios that's in uh is that in brooklyn yes yeah, in queens actually it's in Queens. I'm yo. in Queens, man. What part of Queens? Tell these people it's where you're where Yo, your they laughing at. in the comments, man. Y'all laughing. <laughs> That's because they're like, who's this white boy interviewing Darnell? Yeah, stupid, <laughs> Who, bro. Who's this dude? Who's this, who's this guy? He, he should be on a GQ mag. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yo, because you're working out now. You, like, you do you on your Yeah, seat. I had, um... Because of everything that's going on right now, and like I said, you got to find out later, a lot of things that are coming to fruition this spring. Right. I have a lot, a lot of great things coming up where it's, I public speak a lot, but I have to stay in shape because, first of all, I'm 47. Wow, right? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know. And um, it's about staying in shape, eating healthy. Really you know, don't get me wrong. Women that are in their 30s are keep me healthy. <laughs> You know, I mean, I love them to death, but I mean, Tom Brady's got it right. Just get yourself a Giselle and you're all good. That's Stay a fact. skinny and good looking the rest of your life. That's a fact. But to get back to it, just to let everybody know, thank you for being here. We're talking with Darnell King from Hustle in Brooklyn, Brookhouse Studios, rapper, music producer, great guy, extraordinary. Look, he's about to bump chest right now. He's got a shirt <laughs> bumping out. Get back to Clark Kent, please. Don't be like popping out your chest yeah, on me, man. What's up? <laughs> Come on, man. It's my ladies. Where's my bouncer? Chill, Get hot. this guy out of here. Now, don't get me in trouble now. Nah, we won't do that. But the stories that you're telling is what a lot of people need to hear, man, because um, I work a lot of artists, but I'm not a manager, publicist, or anything because I'm an event producer, which is Thank you. I was up global. But the one thing that I'm learning, is, and I'm glad you brought this up, especially with Mace, because he definitely has his business together. Yeah. And my mother raised me where... You're better off showing up early right. than showing off a second late. 
Right, right, right. right and right, that's right, when right. you're on time. And right. that's what people need to realize. If you're supposed to be there somewhere at five, it's supposed to be at five o'clock, mm -hmm. you show up at a quarter to two. Right. Now, if you know you're going to be late. Yeah. Don't call when you're already late. Yeah. Or you know you're going to be late. What right. you do is give the person enough time, let them know, be like, listen, I just woke up or I'm out of my house. I, I'm, I'm going to be five minutes. I just wanted to let you know the person on the other end may not like it. They're right. going to be like, I appreciate you for that. Thank you. Right, 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 right. You know, and what you're saying is facts. Right. Um, so we t we talked about the, you know, Brickhouse Studios. We'll get into that and, right. and Bad Boy. And, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully I can get Mace and Diddy on here. I think I will eventually yeah. um, because people need to hear from them as well. Right, right, right. Um, let, let's talk about Brickhouse Studios because you put a lot of work into that. Mm -hmm. Every time I see you online, it looks like a party up in there. Like Tory Lane just came in after the Super Bowl and be like, man, Fauci, what? Brickhouse look, Studios, kid. Look, I got, Let's paint, I got paint on top of my hat because I've been painting all day. Yes, I always do, I'm always doing renovations and upgrading, but Brickhouse Studios, not to cut you off. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm glad that I actually built it because the, at the time where I built it, um, I wasn't really even thinking about really doing a studio, but I had some mm -hmm. money on my hands and I was going to do some stupid shit, probably buy a car, get a crib. And I, right. I really didn't need any any of that at the time because I, I had a car, access to a car and I was living in my mom's crib. But mm -hmm. um, just, just when I did that, that allowed Hustle in Brooklyn to come and, and, and be, be, uh, be a right. fruition because they saw like, oh, mm -hmm. this kid has his own studio. Um, and really, literally nobody believed it was my studio like niggas like yo you 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 couldn't have done this by yourself and i didn't right. do it by myself i i, I mm -hmm. have a team but you know i'm i'm definitely the the guy who was going out and shaking doing and baking and, and bringing it back and um i i definitely have a strong support system so um i was actually like working on music and then like the the brooklyn scene started changing and started going into drill music and like mm -hmm. this like two years ago when pop smoke and all that was really like yeah like rest in peace pop smoke yeah seriously. rest in peace pop i never got to meet That's him crazy yeah but um there was a couple kids from brownsville that was really jumping and i'm like you know so mace is always calling me like yo d i got this going on what do you think and then when he bought like these five kids to like get, he put put them on my radar i'm like yo bro this is it like this shit is going to change music and one of the kids he had was five year old foreign you know what I mean? Right. So Fa so he he so Fabio was running around and, and, and really like not really having his music together and that we've been working on it, but I told people like, yo, Fabio is gonna be a he's gonna be the next thing. I told people this. And nobody believed me. Nobody believed right. me. But um we were running around to labels and I was making sure the paperwork was right, the admin stuff was right, I was trying to connect the management and everything, and um so Mace put me in charge of that, like the VP of like A and R for his label, and um, mm -hmm. we got the kids signed for one point five million dollars. Wow! So that was like my first like kind of like crazy like check like that I broke it a deal because it's like you know what I mean I never did nothing like that before. Mm -hmm. So right. they they handled all the paperwork, you know I did the minimal stuff around that, but I made sure everything was glued together, and then we we got the deal. You know Fabio is big drip. He's 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 on fire. That's right. Um, so that relationship I have with labels is open, but now I'm working on some other shit that's going to change the game again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I talk to just you leave it at that. Huh? Le leave it as a tease. Yeah, just leave it at that. Exactly. Because you know how people want to get into your grill and be like, "Yo, what you working on, man?" Yeah. Because I ain't working on shit. <laughs> Yo, they think I'll be what sleeping tired, and I'll, I'll be chilling online because I, you know. I got an agent and stuff like that, and they want me to post more pictures. But I actually, I'm getting paid not to post right now. So people right. are like, yo, D, why are you, why are you doing this? Because I'm, I'm really getting paid not to post a single picture on my page. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, so um, now I'm working on another kid who we just signed. I'm not gonna give you like everybody the, the logistics of it, but it's going right. to be huge. It's going. So to you be guys, huge. you guys have your own label as well. Yeah, we just launched Brickhouse um, Productions as aside from the studio and Brickhouse Radio. So we have um, a platform that when we finish recording the records, we get them out to a pool, we get them out to different avenues um, globally. And this is the home base for that. So we're in phase one of that. 
Um, in a few weeks, we'll be launching the website, and um, I'll definitely bring you on that so you can do what you do. No, of course, and I appreciate that. You're still in touch with, with Mason Diddy, though, correct? Once in a while, just yeah. keep friendship because there, there are so many artists out there right now. They're talented. Yeah. Um, but what I try to tell artists, um, especially when it comes to music, is that, look, you can have all the talent in the world, but you guys got to get your business together. Right. You know, stop posting videos online of your cell phone with the two bars on the right during a karaoke, you know. Right. Get your image correct. Right. Stop doing stupid stuff with guns and posting out and giving the finger. And, you know, what I really hate, and I know it's a part of the game, I I think it's so funny how everybody has a picture holding a wad of money. And my thing is, you know damn well that person withdrew their entire account just so they could take that picture. But then in the meantime, I'm like, oh, damn, I got to pay my cell phone bill. Let me put that back. You know, and I just think it's funny because the, the true artists in the game, you don't need to show off your money and your grills and everything out. Let your talent speak for itself. And then once your talent rocks, get your business together, meaning show up on time. Mm -hmm. Bring the proper music. Get everything mastered. Yourself, put like the right stuff said. together. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Because that, because right now when you post online, no A and R guys go to events anymore unless the person running the event knows them or they're referred to by somebody in the lab. That's how that works. Yeah. So when you're posting online, get your stuff right. Right. You know, and it's right. not just music; it's everything. Right. right. Now the funny right. thing is, tomorrow, I have a great guest tomorrow, and you met her, and I don't think you realized who she was two years ago at the Elsa Global event in Times Square, there was an R&B singer named Bindi Leibowitz that performed. Okay. Am yeah. Amazing R&B singer, right, right? Right, right, right. And she made a headway on The Voice Dope. with Alicia Keys. Dope. Now, Bindi, and I'm going to blow up her spot, and she's her own woman. Mm -hmm. uh, she's not signed, but she's got an amazing voice. She looks like Kat Graham from Vampire Diaries. Where, wow, wow, wow. That's dope. That's dope. That's, that's dope. why I'm telling you, and I'm not saying go get it, but what I'm saying is this. There's a lot of great talent out there. But you know what? Indy has her stuff together. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Um, I actually yeah. know who you're talking about because a kid who uh, – well, not, he's not a kid. He's a, he's a great guy. His name is Chris, Chris Blue. He actually won mm -hmm. The Voice. This, um, he actually won The Voice with Alicia yeah. Keys. And yes. he told me about her because he records here at Brick House. So I definitely, I remember, because I remember, yeah, I remember at the event. So it, it kind of clicked like, dang, that's who it was. Right, 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 right. Yeah, look her up. She'll be on tomorrow night. And her name's Bindi Leibowitz. I normally don't poach artists out there. And the only reason why I'm doing this because Bindi has such an amazing voice, beautiful girl. She's a newfound mom, right. but she's always about her business. She's one of those artists where, you know when you work with her, right. it's going to be easy because she has her stuff together. She's like the package. Right, right, right. So I'm, always, I'm telling everybody out there, watch this girl right, right, and listen right. to her. She came out with a song called FaceTime. Right, right. It's going to play. I was going to ask her if I can use this song on here, but I'm like, yeah. yeah. Then people are going to think my thing's a porno. <laughs> I can't do that because the song is sexy. I got you. But I got you. getting back, I'm loving the way you're moving right now. Um, I've been watching you for a couple of years since the day I met you. We met, I think we met at a Brooklyn party, right? In Park Slope. Yeah. I yeah. met you. Yeah. I, I didn't even know I was going at. I looked like a hobo when I walked in. <laughs> like right, right, I was right. in my coat. I wanted to go to sleep. Uh -huh. But uh, you were good people when I first met you. Right. And that's when I learned about what you were doing. Right. But on, on the music side, tell us about, um, you know, we have about another, I can do another 10 minutes. Tell us about Hustle in Brooklyn. Oh, um, so, you are on season one with that, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lot of things going on with Hustle in Brooklyn now too. They've been reaching back out to me because um, mm -hmm. they they want to do they want to do another season of that. Um, really? So, yeah. They, okay. They, they going they're figuring it out. Um, but how how that happened with me was basically just having the, my brand and aligning myself with other people and really pushing right. it. So I mean, they found me on Instagram. I can't even lie to you. They found my boy Toast, and then. They hit me in a DM, and literally, I right. don't even check my DMs, bro. I do, when I see DMs, I'm like, okay. But this lady named um, Ray Six hit me. And she was like, yo, we're looking, we're doing a show for um, mm -hmm. BET or whatever, for a major network. She didn't say what, what network it was, but she said, yo, send your resume over. I like what I see on your page. 
So I sent them my, my, my resume and I sent the videos and stuff that I did with Maze Puff, you know, and she immediately hit me back like, yo, I love you. I love, I love what you got going on. What else do you have? Like, what should, you have a business? I'm like, yeah, you know, I have a place called Brickhouse Studios. So right. She was like, um, send me the info on that. So I sent her the, the info on that. And then they were like, yo, what's your love life like? And I was like, oh, here we go. So at the time, I was... <laughs> That's what you want to hear, right? Right. That's what they, because they, you know, TV is drama. So, you know. All so, drama. Yeah, all drama. They got to sell it. So, you know, I, I was engaged at the time. And, you know, I just literally had a son, Ashton and um and Raquel. So um, I, sh I sent them that stuff. And they was like, yo, we love what you got going on. You're going to be the good guy on the show. And, and you know, whatever. We're gonna be, it's going to be black excellence. And, you know, it was it was that. But you know, it was a lot of drama with it, and then you know, I had you know, I had a, I had a pass. You know, I know, I you know everything. Everybody has a little pass. So right. they found they found a chick, and she was like, "Yo, I'm going to be on this show, whether you like it or not. So you you know, you know, you better do. You know what I mean, you throw me an alley oop." So she's she's awesome. I, I fuck with her. We had a little rough patch, but she's doing her thing. Um, and Hustle in Brooklyn came out. Mind you, we didn't even shoot a pilot. We actually shot the shows. Mm -hmm. So wow. we shot the shows and it went directly to the, the network. So whatever we shot, the network took. It wasn't like we had to reshoot. But when I when I got when I started shooting, I brought my whole team on. I don't, it, it didn't matter who was was with me. I brought my whole team on the show, and a lot of other right. people weren't doing that. Like I bought I bought um at the time my artist named Kevin Antonio. I bought my guy Vi who was managing me at the time. I bought um Malik. Everybody, you know what I mean and I really felt like I had to do that because they had my back and they were supporting me the whole time. I'm like, why wouldn't I bring my team on the show that I'm doing? Mm -hmm. So, it, it, you know, it, it gave them actual credits because they got their, their song on the, on the show because I negotiated that. I'm like, yo, if y'all want me to do this, y'all mm -hmm. gotta put, y'all gotta put my music in it. Right. So, um, they did that. They did a lot of the voiceover work at Brick House. And, um, when I started shooting, it, it, it kind of changed me, bro. I can't lie. It kind of, like, TV of changed me because it made me, like, you know, like, literally, like, when you have an opportunity to do something great and it's like, you want to be the bad guy, you want to be the good guy, and I had, to, I had to choose, like, and, you know, it was, a, it was a hard decision for me because I did have a family and I had to, you know, I kind of felt like some, somehow a little bit I sold my soul because when you do something for money that you wouldn't right. normally do morally, that's literally like selling your soul. You well, I mean, if you recognize the problem, that that's the first way to success. But always remember, too, that money, unfortunately, is a part of life where we need to survive. Right. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you may have to do something you may not 100% agree with. Right, right. But unfortunately, that is a part of life sometimes. Right, I mean, right. I've been there. So I get it. Right. So I was, being, I was being super honest, right? And, you know, I knew what they, would, they wanted to do, and I knew what they needed for the show. And literally, I don't know if you ever saw, the, the, like, the commercial, but the first commercial was like, Darnell, this, that, and the third. And he's seeing a side chick on the side. And that was not true. I, she was not no side chick. I wasn't even dealing with Shorty. Yeah. You know right. I mean? But Wait, that was my girlfriend, wasn't it? You were dealing with my... Yo, that's messed up, man. And I don't even get royalties for that crap. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Anyway, I'm sorry. I just. Yeah, I'm, I'm right sorry. Now. I had to take her. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're missing, girl. You don't know what you're missing. Yo. I'm a black man living in a white man's world. You don't know what you're missing. Yeah, you stupid, bro. You stupid. <laughs> so. I played the game and I played it. I played it to the fullest. I was being honest. And you know, one thing about t TV, bro, is like, you can be honest, but they'll do things and they'll do voiceovers and they'll switch the whole narrative. Like they'll literally yeah. switch the whole narrative. So they'll be like, oh, we got to do that part over, but I need you to say this. I need you to say that. And I'm like, I never said that. Now I'm getting in beef. I'm coming home. Literally, I'm on Tuesday nights, we watching the show. I'm in the streets. Old lady is like, I hate you, Darnell. Why are you doing that girl like that? Why? Why you do it? Like it was bad in these streets, bro. It was bad. Yeah, it's it's really really bad. That reminds me of the movie Low Down Dirty Shame. 
when Jada Pickett went up to the actor in the soap opera and yeah. just knocked him out. Right. Because people are crazy. It's like, yo, it's a character. That's not them in real life. They may be part of it, but that that's, I'll be honest with you, reality shows right now, and it's nothing personal. Uh -huh. It's showing a bad rep among society because there are a lot of kids out here that watch it because of the drama, yeah. but they mimic it. Everybody wants to be a Cardi B, but it's that's like, listen, that's how she grew up. That's what she did. It she did it. It doesn't mean you go out and start shaking your ass, and you're not going to get paid. Like right. she already did it. She already broke the barrier doing it. Do right, your right. own, bro. Right, 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 right. Reality right. shows, fights. I mean, we all know for the past four years that drama has been the biggest reality show of all time. Cardi B, is a, she's a phenomenon. She's like one in a million. She's awesome. Yeah. I love Cardi B. She's yeah. great and she's real. And that's what people like and hate about her at the same time. That's why I keep telling people, listen. Make sure y'all keep and, liking, you know, man. <laughs> yeah, and Sunni's like, she just wrote, it's all entertainment. And it is. It it's is. all entertainment. You know, a lot of them getting it's paid. Really it's a billion to one shot. But at the end of the day, just be you. Don't be the next Cardi B. Be hey, the man, next you. you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And that's what you're doing right now, man. And you know, and the thing is, hustle in Brooklyn is just an avenue that I think you can use to benefit for you highly. You I know, am. and at the end of the day, man, bad publicity sometimes is great publicity as long as you use it to make a Correct. positive Correct. impact on Correct. the world. Correct. Correct. And that's what you need to do. It's yep. always gonna be there. Like right now, I get DMs sometimes because I'm becoming like this civil rights person. Right. And I get people saying, how can you go against your race? I'm like, what, the that's human crazy. race? That's crazy. My bad. You, you, it's like, it's like, and that's just the way it is. There yeah. are racists out there that are getting mad at me because they're like, you're not going against your own kind. You, yeah. No, you're going against your own kind. That's I'm like, crazy. listen, I'm about the human kind. That's crazy. So if you want to come at me and call me a racist, then my attitude is, what the hell are you running from? Right. What race are you running from, bro? So exactly. there's always going to be negative everything. Right. And the fact comes down to is take that negative, especially now with COVID, and turn it into something positive. Mm -hmm. And you've been doing that since you've been nine years old, since the start with that movie, man. From right. there are no children here with Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> <laughs> I got to throw that out there again. Crazy. Guys got to check that out. Fact. Um, but I'll be honest with you, man. I'm loving this first interview on uh facetime with todd wharton thank you thank you um I appreciate you for yeah having me. i'm honored to have you on here dude i mean gtc live it was it was really doing real well but you mm -hmm. want to know something with everything else i got going on right now i'm cool with doing facetime with todd wharton every day That's because cool. i'm able to reach people from around the world that i couldn't book right you know right 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 and i definitely want to have you on more when you have something else coming out, especially yeah. with Brickhouse Studios, because I'll be honest with you, the way you're going, I think Brickhouse Studios and your label could be one of those top labels that I think can come out in the next couple of years just to be bigger and bigger. It actually will. I actually will because I actually partnered up with some guys, some some major heavy hitters in the game, some tech guys. So they're kind of like they're kind of like quiet about it, but um, we definitely ha like I said, I have a lot of things in the works, and I definitely am looking to work with more people, more artists, and help to bridge the gap between the high the you know the people in the office and the street. So if you see me and you got music or you know someone who's interested in being a producer, singer, hit me up because I definitely oh, I, I'm always looking, Todd. Like if I see something that's really super dope, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to yeah. figure it out. So don't be afraid. In this game, me. you have to keep looking. Yeah. People got to learn that. Learn from what D just said. He's always looking because the minute you guys fall asleep on this game, you might as well stay asleep because right. when you wake up the next day, you're not waking up to your dream. You're right. waking up to a nightmare because you closed your eyes on reality. Exactly, exactly. And that's what you've been doing. You've been, you've been killing it, man. Thank so you, bro. before we go, man, why don't you let everybody know where they can find you, follow you the whole nine so they can connect with you okay um all my social media handles uh first and foremost let me say thank you to god for allowing me to be and do what i do and live and be i'm blessed so i just want to give a shout out to him um and i want to give a shout out to you todd for actually thinking of me because um Definitely. i like when you when you posted it and stuff like that i like i, I immediately like appreciated that and, and when you hit me about it i'm like yeah bro i do it of course 
So mm-hmm. whenever you need me, I'm I'm here for you. Um, Thanks, man. You can Appreciate find it. me on my social media handles, uh, D King Online. Um, definitely follow Brickhouse Studios. Uh, follow Brickhouse Radio, and um, and uh, believe in yourself. At the end of the day, if if you're if you're somewhere in life, and you feel like people aren't you know gravitating towards you, you got to get out and hustle. You gotta if if you really want this and you're dedicated, it's gonna happen yeah. for you. Like, don't just because someone said no to you. I'm I'm really telling you this because firsthand, that's what they told me. They they told me I'd never be able to work with like people in the industry. So for me to actually prove everyone wrong, especially my math teacher, Mr. Hyman, um, which I really pride myself on what I've become, because he saw mm-hmm. me. I saw him in the supermarket because he works in the supermarket now. And, yeah. um, and I told him, I'm like, you said I would never make it and I'd never be nothing. And I'm actually doing what I love. And I'm glad that you're still here to witness that. So it was kind of a moment for me. <laughs> no, that's the best thing in the world, man. Uh, and I love to hear that. So, and at the end of the day, anybody that tells you you're not going to be somebody, it's mostly likely because that person gave up in their dreams a long time ago. Right. And they try to shoot down other people's dreams. Listen. Right. A dream is only reality until you wake up and you live it. And right. as long as there are people like you and everybody else out there in the world hustling, not just in Brooklyn, right. but in life in itself, you'll go far. Right. Can I say um, one? Can I interject one more thing before I leave? Yeah, of course. Go ahead, man. Um, shout outs to Sarah. She has a, a son who produces. His name is Jackie Beats. Um, he's amazing. Mm-hmm. He's from Minnesota. I'm working with him next. Shout out to Brody Fresh. Um, I always want to give a quick shout out to my supporters. Rain, appreciate you. SUNY, of course. J Mac, um, Kira, Red Carpet Kira, we got to work. Um, who else? Oh, uh, Kev was on here. That's my guy. I seen Sydney, Sydney Dream. She's like a big YouTube star. She, I, we got to connect you with her next. So, you, so you Sydney? can put her. Okay. Sydney, Sydney Renee, she's dope. She does a whole bunch of covers. I see. Jalen, Jalen, definitely DM me. Maestro, um, CW engineer, he's over here. D Blaze is my engineer. Um, Kaneta, uh, Raquel, Mookie. Uh, <laughs> um, Keep it going, baby. Keep it going. <laughs> uh, who else? Who else? Suli, um, Jackie Beast is on here. Uh, Caesar, shout outs to you. DJ G Money, um, Santasha, I love y'all. Um, Bo Rich. Well, I got to play out the crown out music. So two people <laughs> I want to like, connect you to. Brody, no, bring it, bring it. Brody Fresh, he's dope. He's coming out with some new stuff. Shy Cloud is another artist from Philly we signed. Um, I'm working with Benny Boom, too. So we're doing a whole bunch of stuff with him. Um, Moolah, uh, that's my girl. Shout out to you, Iceberg Slim. Um, Nick, uh, damn. Talk of New York. You know, it's funny. Tyson. I, I feel like, I feel like I you're did. trying to call out all the women in your life so you can have a date tomorrow. <laughs> I can't forget to anybody. David. Shout out to my coffee. I forgot their name. Uh, yo, <laughs> Juicy Tiff, all y'all who came on here, I appreciate y'all. I know I probably missed a few people. I love y'all. And D Blaze, like I said, my guy. Um, singer, Sean, um, Lou, Prayer, Buster Rhymes. Um, those guys yeah. who really are like, showing me with like the ropes and doing that what i have to do and and that's about it i thank y'all for pulling up on the kid <laughs> there you go and the academy coffee goes too <laughs> <laughs> yo so anyway guys anyway this is uh facetime with todd wharton definitely follow me at todd wharton official on my new account uh we're gonna reshow this video at todd wharton we're gonna show it at gtc live uh you know, when you go on Todd Warden Official at IG, all my information is there, our websites and everything, learn more about me. Uh, we are tonight honored that we are speaking with Darnell King from Hustle in Brooklyn. And like I said, he's doing a lot more than just Brooklyn where he's hustling. Okay. Now, tomorrow night, we have from The Voice, one of the big, big contestants, I believe, I think it was season 11. I might be wrong. We have Bindi Leibowitz in the house tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. She'll be here, and we're going to talk about where she is at right now with her R&B career. And as I always say in shout GTC. Shout out to Shauna. I forgot Shauna. Sorry. Shout out to Shauna. There, there you go. <laughs> And as I always say, Dee, thank you for having, thanks for being here. I appreciate you, man. We're going to talk soon. 
And to everybody out there right now, be safe, be healthy, wear your mask, whether you believe it or not, because it's not just about you, it's about the other people in the room and your family. But always remember, if you're not living a passionate life, then whose life are you dreaming? Did I say that right? You did. If you're not living a passionate life, then whose life are you living? That's my own tagline. <laughs> I can't even say it. Yeah, but guys, it. have a great night. I need some more coffee. And this is FaceTime with Todd Wharton. We'll see you tomorrow night.